All right, this video is gonna mainly focus on cart paths, but we'll also deal with some mesh management ideas. I think one of the big things that you gotta decide on initially is how are you gonna handle your terrain? Are you gonna allow some gaps between meshes and then you're gonna paint your terrain? Uh, there's also some other concept at the end that uh, I'll be able to show where uh, we could potentially fill in this gap with a mesh as well. Uh, I think most people are going to spline this way where we're going to leave some gaps, put some trees in, paint some of this uh, by hand in Unity. But that's going to kind of address uh, where we're going to want our car cart paths to go. Cart paths can go on the terrain. If you're going to have the cart paths go on the terrain, then typically uh, you might use something like uh, RAM from uh, Nature Manufacture to do that. Uh, there are also other ways to do that as well, but uh, that's just one of the easier ways to do it. Uh, ultimately, I'm going to show an idea where the cart paths can occur on the mesh. The beauty of doing it on the mesh is that if you draw it on the mesh, we're going to be able to do uh, some auto routines in Blender where we can add um, some curbs to it. But then it's just also cleaner. You can also do some things where the uh, cart path could cut across the fairway as well. Um, and so there's some different ideas, but you have to understand what Blender's going to do with the path if it's on the mesh, and then what happens when you go outside of the mesh. So I'm going to show you a couple different concepts here in terms of how you can manage, ma manage it um, on your course. I'm going to hide these. This is just a random course here that has a path um, that goes all the way around the course. Now, I think some people get a little too focused on being perfect with the paths and not realizing that, you know what? From a T view, if we're on this hole, most people don't know what's happening over here. And I, I honestly don't think it's that important. So there can be some decision to break up the paths in an artistic manner. Um, and then same would be here, like in the end, this join here after the hole, you know, break it up here. Nobody's going to look in the trees and be like, God, where, where was that path? Uh, disappointed that they didn't put the path back here. But uh, in the end, I like to break them up on a per hole basis. Um, one of my courses, Sciota, you can go check out and see. That's, that's how I did that one. And I don't think anybody's regretting how the paths occurred there or turned out. But uh, I will show you how we could do these joined between the two holes and separate. Let's first deal with them separately and then we can show how we could join them between the two holes if that's ultimately your desire. I'm going to call this hole one here even though I know that's probably not what this hole really is, and just show you how we can uh, manage the path here. Now, I can't see the path, obviously, at the moment, so one way to deal with this is to decrease the opacity of uh, your, your object layer, or sorry, your layer. So that's going to decrease everything. The other way to deal with it is if you have this objects panel up, or bring this objects panel up by here, object, objects, that'll bring this panel up, we can actually specifically look at this spline here, which is the rough that's in my view, and maybe I'm going to get it out of the way. I prefer right now, I'm going to just uh, decrease the opacity on it um, just so that I can still see where the rough is. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to contain my path entirely within the rough. The reason I'm going to do that is when we have to ultimately lower the terrain below our meshes, when we do that, if we had path outside of the rough and we lowered the lowered the terrain, there's a chance it could become visible because the, the path is so narrow. And so this is something that will make sense to you later on when you start building more courses, you start doing some of this terrain lowering, and you see in Unity, oh, this is what he meant when he was talking about that. It does work. We have tried it with a course on Deer Run, uh, and it works fine. Uh, but you do have to uh, just be a little more particular about it. So if this is your first course, I would just maybe advise keeping the paths within an outermost uh, mesh. And in this case, it's going to be my outermost uh, rough mesh. So the way we're going to do it, let's go ahead and draw a path here. Let's make sure we're on the correct layer. So I'm going to click layers here. I'm on hole one. I'm going to lock hole two. That's this one here. And then obviously my satellite. So we're unlocked on hole one and we're just going to be drawing this path. We're going to pick up the B spline tool. Now, when we're going to draw this, we're just going to start with left clicks here. And I'm just going to left click along this path. When I get to the end of the path, we're just going to finish it with a right click. 
and that's going to be just an incomplete curve basically it's not closed all right so now you'll see it comes up funky and I'm going to bring up the fill and stroke tab we don't want to fill for this right now and all we want is a stroke now if you've watched some of the other previous videos I've told you blender is not going to be able to deal with strokes so I'm going to show you how we're going to draw this path then we're going to finalize it and turn it into a fill Blender can only deal with fills, so any strokes that you show on your SVG will not end up showing on your course. So right now, if I were to convert this, this uh, skinny little line is not going to show up anywhere. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit just to deal with this and kind of make it a little more perfect around here. But uh, one of the things we're going to want to do is obviously increase the thickness of this line. We can do that in this fill and stroke tab here. So we're on the stroke, and we made sure that it's being stroked you know, click this box here and that will uh, make the stroke show up. But then go to stroke style. And if you've got this set properly, this is going to be millimeters. And remember our um, our entire panel here is working in millimeters and that converts to meters in Blender. So if I make this 3.5, sorry, that's not what I wanted to have happen. 3.5, it's going to increase the thickness of that. That may be a little too thick. Yeah, uh, give me just one second. going to pause here. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, my scale was actually incorrect here, so I just wanted to fix that. So typically a path is going to be in this three to four meter range, at least on the courses that I've kind of fiddled around with. So if you set your uh, stroke style to millimeters and then change that so then it matches similar width as your path there, the other option you have here, you can leave this squared off. I tend to like to round things for whatever reason. So if you click this caps here, you can round out that cap and it'll do that on the on both ends of that. So now you can see that this path is basically done here. Uh, ultimately, it's got to be the concrete color. So I'm going to select that um, and we have to convert this path. Uh, once we know, I guess, the shape is correct, so I guess I need to back up a little bit. Verify that your shape is what it, you want it to be, and you're not going to tweak it anymore. If you go into this tool here, this selection tool, you know, you can edit that and get it just right. And then once you know that this is how you want it, you're not going to fiddle with it anymore. You're going to basically set it, and you can easily redraw it if, if you mess this up. But we're going to set this by turning this into a fill. So right now it's just a stroke, and then we're going to go path, or sorry, uh, object, um, sorry, path, stroke to path. And, uh, and that's going to convert this to a fill. And so now this is similar to our rough and our fairway and our green and all the other shapes here. And then we can now change this to be the set the fill to the concrete. So now we're done with that path. Um, let's turn the opacity back up on this layer. It looks like is my path in the wrong layer. Could be. Nope, it's correct. Okay, so now you can see how you can keep it confined uh, to a single hole. So then the question is, well, what's going to happen with this join? You're going to paint over it in Unity. This is part of the Unity terrain. You can make it disappear. Is that so heartbreaking? Maybe. And so then I'll show you how you could have it joined here. You could actually have this cart path run through here if you really wanted to. That's going to go back to sort of the John Deere uh, sort of uh, issue that I talked about, how that'll be on the terrain. I just don't really like that, and I just don't think it's that necessary to do. Uh, so you could paint over this in Unity so it doesn't exist anymore, or you could go into your satellite overlay into Photoshop, GIMP, Photo P, however you want to uh, adjust your um, images. And, and just make this go away with the stamp tool. So now let me just do the path on this hole as well here so that you can just see it again and then I'll show you how we could combine them uh, between the two. So I'm going to make sure I'm on hole two. I'm going to lock hole one in the satellite and we're just going to pick up the B spline tool again and we're just going to trace out our path here. I'll also want to show you at the end of this a unique instance where you might have a loop around and how you would deal with a loop around. Oh, this is going to be 
a little bit of a pain here. So I didn't have all that in the screen. So this will be interesting. We're going to have to add to my shape. Can it, will it let me do that? So let's see if we can go edit our spline here and see if it'll let us add to it. Nope. Let me turn this into a stroke only so it makes more sense. And let's see if it'll be nice to me. And can I add to it? There is a way to add to it. And it's worth knowing how to do that. So let me pause and come back. So I'm going to do this on this. I'm going to grab this here and move it all the way up here. And then I can just double click in here to add nodes. It's just easier than trying to figure out a way to add it to the end. All right, so disaster averted there, and now I'm going to add the caps to that, and then I'm going to just check this out, make sure it's how I want it to be. And you can obviously fiddle more with this. This is just for the sake of time. I'm not going to be overly anal with it. And then we're going to go ahead and convert this so that it's path, stroke to path, and then I'm going to turn it into concrete. Okay, so let's zoom out here. So that was shift left mouse button there to switch between that. Um, all right, so that's basically how I would advise doing it if this is kind of your first course. I think you'll be more than happy with it. I don't think anybody's going to complain about your paths. If you're so uh, persistent on wanting paths to join be between holes, we can do it. The way I would advise doing it is I would actually join these two holes on the same layer. And so this is kind of a good thing to understand. Blender is going to cut on a per layer basis. So everything on hole one here is going to cut correctly. But if I have something from hole two overlapping hole one, so let's just do that for instance. If, I've dra if I drag this out over here, and I let's just make it a different color just so you can see what's happening. If I drag that out over there, and let's even, let's put it up. Let's put this above hole one too as well. Let's see. Okay. Right now, if I take this to Blender and you want this to cut this away like this, it's not going to happen. These are going to interfere with each other here. This is going to interfere with the path. It's going to interfere with whole ones rough as well. And the reason that is, is Blender is cutting on a per whole basis or per layer basis, really. Don't worry so much about the name. But uh, it does have to follow my um, criteria for having two numbers. And if you're... Um, you know, single digit, like one through nine, it should be zero, one, zero, two, zero, three, et cetera. But if you're so, um, if you're going to put it this way, these are going to collide. It will work out okay because the two materials will be the same. So in Unity, it won't clash, but it will with the path. Uh, so just don't get in the habit of having uh, splines overlap or having meshes overlap. So how you would handle this instead, if you want this path uh, coming from hole one into hole two. So let's first just draw that. Let's go and um, sort of connect them. Eh, let's not do it that way. Let's first bring these together. What you're going to want to do is make sure these are on the same uh, layer with each other. And so yes, you can do that even though this is hole one and this is hole two. We're going to marry them together and we're going to call them hole one or hole two. Just take your pick. But uh, let me put this back as rough. I'm going to pause here and turn off my Discord. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to marry these two layers together. And we can do that by let's, okay, we're on hole two. So let's just pick everything on hole two. So I'm left clicking and dragging here. Uh, you can also do edit select all here. And that's going to pick all the meshes or shapes here in hole two. And then I'm going to just cut that out. So edit cut. And then I'm going to go to hole one. I'm going to unlock it. 
and I'm gonna lock hole two, so I know it's just happening in hole one here, and I'm gonna do paste in place. Okay, so nothing bad happened there. Now if I hide hole two, see nothing happens. I can get rid of hole two's layer if I want, so I'm deleting it. All right, so now what's happened is if we took this to Blender, it will cut out exactly how it looks here, which we don't really want this. This rough needs to go uh, behind. So let's unlock hole one. Let's move this rough down. Now uh, remember page down moves things um, between layers or down layers. You can also come up here and do that. This lower to bottom is end. That would drop it all the way below everything. So now what's really cool is Blender's going to cut this out exactly how it looks. We can join these paths now and I like having this, see we still have this outer rough between these. Now one of the things I might tell you to do here is I don't like sharp edges. It just gives Blender an opportunity to mess up or to just look a little funky. So one thing we might want to do now if we've married these two together would be is we can join these two shapes together uh, that are same colors. So let's marry the, the rough together. So I'm picking both the roughs here. And then we're going to do path union and that's joining them together. Now when I go to this edit tool, you'll see these dots here are editing the union between these two. And so I can delete this um, or I can move the anchor on it here just to make it rounded. I'm going to just delete it, I think. Let's add one in here. Let's fix this a little bit. So I just don't like these sharp spots. And you don't have to be that weird about things, but um, it just, I know just from doing uh, all this stuff in, in the 3D that it just does better if you have sort of softer shapes or it does a little better. But you can, you can try to do as much as you want and see if it converts. It probably will, to be honest. And it might even be more unique or random and look better than what I do. Um, so how are we gonna join these together? We've, uh, we could go back and redraw it as one. That's probably the easiest way to do it. We could also now draw a new spline between these two. And I'm still on that whole one. And then we're gonna fix that so it doesn't have a fill, but it does have a stroke. And we want that to be 3.5. And that looks pretty good. I'm gonna zoom in here a little, let's see and tweak this. So whatever reason, it just changed that to zero. All right, so we're gonna tweak this before we change it. It's probably better to redraw it really, uh, but this will show you how we can join it. So now I need to change this. So we're gonna do this stroke to path, then we're gonna change it to the concrete. And then what we can do since I'm only on hole uh, layer two and that's the or whole one and that's the only one unlocked. I can do this edit uh, select same by fill color and then it's going to select all my concrete on on this hole. I tried to zoom out there. Sorry. I use minus a lot to zoom out and for whatever reason it doesn't always work here. It's something I, it just works in Photoshop so it's my brain's used to it. But um, let's go back and pick one of these paths. And you can do select same by color or fill color. And now all the paths are selected. And then we're going to do um, path union. And that joins them all together. So now you see it's one mesh versus three. And then I'm going to come back in here where I joined and just clean it up because I know it's going to be a little funky. At the jo You can see that. And that'll still probably work. But let's just go for clean topology here. Just don't need those little points so close to each other. All right, sweet. So now I've joined these two holes. Uh, you have other things you can do. You can union bunkers uh, between holes. Um, that's kind of advisable because it speeds up the cutting routine in Blender. So I would take all the bunkers on this hole, which we're calling hole two, and I'm gonna union those, so path union. And why am I doing that? Well, when we go to Blender, it's going to cut every shape uh, through every mesh or every shape. 
And so if we union these, then bunkers are going to just be seen as one entity. And then this rough is only going to need to be cut by the bunker once. And when these bunkers need to be cut, it'll only happen once. It just it makes things a little easier um, when they are in Blender. And uh, the other thing you can do is do the same thing for T's. And why am I doing it on one hole versus just bring them all together? There's something called frustrum culling, which you don't really need to know, but it's basically what's in your camera view. And if we join everything together and my camera view is just this way, you know, coming down this hole two, it's still going to be drawing hole one, even though things aren't in view. So I would just keep everything on a, a un, unionize things on a per hole basis, if that makes any sense. So all the T boxes um, here for hole one can be connected. Same with the bunkers for hole one. You don't have to do this. It's just going to speed it up for when you go into Blender. And then um, let me pause here and bring it into Blender just so you guys can see how it converts. Okay, so just to reiterate kind of on how you do this as well, I'm going to just save this as, and this is going to be, um, make sure this is in our tutorial here. I'm going to call this tutorial underscore no sat, which means I'm going to remove the satellite. And then I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. And then resave. I never really set this one up properly. I just copy and pasted it in there. So the size of it's probably not going to be perfect as well. But um, after I've saved that, remember you're saving that into your terrain folder, um, which you've, you know, you've copied in everything from the conversion files. And then you're just going to drag and drop this over the exe file. It's going to make a no sat converted. Then we can come into Blender. And I can import that SVG and let's go to the tutorial here. And so you'll see we should have that Holo 1. And let's go ahead, I'm going to go into the debug to manage this and just let's convert the selected files. And so, and when you run debug, it'll give you, uh, it'll show you errors if you have problems. Uh, like if you have wrong colors, it'll show up red. If you got clashing, it's going to show um, issues uh, within the meshes. They're not going to look clean just like they do in the SVG. So you can see, perfectly done. Um, and, you know, you've got stuff that we could never do before. I've got clashing with the semi-rough and the rough. And then, um, you know, look how tight this is. It can still handle it. And no problems here and that green what the heck's that green doing um, so anyway cool hopefully that helps okay i forgot to mention on how to uh, do a loop around if you want to do a loop around you have uh, to do something special in the loop area so this is this is the look that you're going for so let's get rid of the fill put the stroke on put it 3.5 okay i've got this loop around we can't have a closed loop like this. Can't do this anywhere. Blender needs to handle the cutouts. So if we want a cart path loop around, I'm going to show you that you're going to have to draw this inner part as well as rough. And you're going to have to make this uh, bigger part here be completely filled in. So let's do the stroke to path. I'm going to put the caps on the ends there. And then we're going to stroke to path here. And then I'm going to show you, you're going to want to delete the inside out. So pick these and um, hit delete. So I'm just um, box selecting them and deleting them out. And then we're gonna make this concrete. So you want this shape, this is kind of like a P or whatever it may be. And then you're going to draw in the rough and uh, there's just certain reasons for that. But just believe me, if you do it, and you leave it as a closed loop, it, it's going to cause problems in Blender. So instead, draw this, delete out the center, and then come back with another B spline and draw the inner island. 
and you're going to want to do this even say if you want to do an inner island on a on a bunker um, you know you're it's the same way your bunker's going to be here and you're going to draw the island there and then we're going to make this rough so if i would go into the object panel here and hide this you know just complete the fill don't panic blender's going to handle it for you and then put the outer rough island on top of that so that's how you would handle uh,